What if you could do anything that you want to get done? Your most important work, the work that moves the needle forward, that makes significant progress, and that gets you to fulfill your wildest dreams. All of this only by working half of the hours that you're working right now. Wouldn't that sound amazing? If it does, let me share with you a personal work, let's call it like protocol or routine that has allowed me to do something similar to this. It is based out of two of what I consider to be the four pillars of life. So the two that we are talking about are health and wealth. And it also involves routine support tools and a list of things to avoid. So having said that, if this sounds interesting, let's break down these things together. Now, the funny thing is that the first thing, even though related to the work protocol, it is not inside the concept of work. It is more related to optimal performance, optimal performance of the body, optimal performance of the mind. So we are going to be talking about the pillar of health. There are three components that we'll have in mind. The sleep routine, the diet, and the exercise routine. Now, let's break them down one by one. When it comes to the sleep, multiple things that we need to consider. First, don't eat anything three hours before to sleep. We would just want to make sure that all of the energy is going to be uh, on just uh, your body recovering and really resting and uh, liking processing all of the food that you ate just before going to bed. Second thing, is to make sure that you have like a hygiene type of routine before going to sleep. So personally, I just take a shower every single night before getting into bed. The other thing is that after 7 p.m., the lights that we have are a little bit more moderate, making sure that in all of our devices, we just have like these warm type of lights, like the settings um, that you can turn on on your MacBook, iPhone, or, or like all of your devices. Besides that, making sure that we close the curtains right when we're going to be sleeping. So closing your curtains, making sure that your room is just pitch black. Also, when it comes to the temperature, I've read that when it comes to the optimal for the body when sleeping, it's around 17 to 18 uh, degrees. So for the room temperature, that's a little bit like cold. Also, if you like me, live like in an apartment or something like that, making sure that all of like your doors are with lock that your windows are closed. This is important like from a subconscious perspective to make sure that you as a person like feel secure where, when you are sleeping and your mind is not maybe ruminating on survival mode, if that makes sense. And the last thing that is one of the most important things of this sleep routine is going consistently to bed to a certain hour. Whatever is that hour that you set, but make sure that you go to bed consistently at that hour. Personally, I try to go between 11 p.m. to 12 p.m. So yeah, basically these are all of the components for optimizing your sleep routine. There are a million of theories and a million of things that you could do. These are just the ones that I have personally found the most useful. And by the way, a parenthesis, all of the things that we will be discussing just come from what I have read in articles, in books, talk with experts, talk with friends, my own research. So I invite you to do your own research. At the end of the day, it's all about testing, right? I've tried millions of things in this combination of things that I'm sharing with you are just the things that have worked the best for me. Now, we just covered the sleep protocol. Let's get into the diet. For the diet, very straightforward, very simple. I am not like a, a nutritionist, anything like that. But the basic stuff that I do for optimizing my, di my diet is, first of all, I do intermittent fasting every single day. So my first meal is between uh, 12 to uh, 1, 1 p.m. every single day. So that's more because of focus in the first like work block that I have on the morning. Uh, besides the intermittent fasting, I have like an eight hour eating window. So from like 12 p.m. to around 8 p.m. is the time where I am allowed to eat. Usually what I do is that every time that I eat, I eat like two meals at once, right? Like at 12 p.m., 1 p.m., I eat like the breakfast and the lunch. In the night, I will eat a double dinner basically and maybe uh, close to 8 p.m. I'll eat like a sandwich, a protein shake, something like that. So those are a few of the things. Before that, making sure that you're not eating at all like any processed food or like sugar, uh, nothing like that. Limit it as much as you can. And the last thing that I will say is just trying to stick to a diet, right? Whatever might be that right diet for you, it's sticking to it. Besides that, so we cover the sleep routine, like all of the items, we cover the diet, and lastly, the exercise. Exercise is going to be very straightforward as well. So simply try to get like the, the rate of your heart every single day a little bit higher. 
uh, just pump it every single day, 30 minutes to an hour of exercise every single day. What I love to do personally, I just go, go like for a walk, I go for a run, I play tennis, I play, I don't know, ping pong. I try to do a boxing session, like a nice boxing session. I go training to like the gym and lift, lift some weights. Whatever it might be, what do you prefer to do? Go ahead and do it at least 30 minutes every single day. And having said that, these three components that we just break down, in my opinion, are what will allow you to have like this health pillar in check, right? But bottom line is that these three things that we just covered are within like this pillar of health and are crucial for unlocking like this optimal performance, right? Remember, we are going to be focusing on how to work only four hours of work every single day, but in a way that is super productive, that really moves the needle forward and that helps us achieve whatever are the goals that we set for ourselves. But we first need to optimize our body and mind through the health protocol uh, and the three components of the protocols that we just break down. Diet, sleep routine, and lastly, the exercise. Now, let's actually talk about the work protocol. As you saw, we focus on optimal performance. Now let's actually focus on how this like for our workday actually looks like. Multiple things that I would like to touch on. This protocol that I have like developed that is personally is nothing that I have invented, it's personally just what I use, is optimized on how can I achieve the most with the least amount of effort, right? So multiple things I will cover here. The first one is to always the tasks that you're going to be sitting down and starting to work on and starting to execute are tasks that you have already predefined the day before. Every single day, you set the tasks that you're going to do the next day so that when you sit down, you can go all in, all on execution mode and you don't have any doubts on, on what are the tasks that you need to focus on, what is the work that needs to get done, right? For this, there's also something very important to have in mind. I don't know what is your specific method to determine like what is the importance of the tasks that you're going to be working on. But of course, my recommendation is that the tasks that you select to work on are super high leverage. Maybe you are using something like the Async Howard matrix and you are defining like tasks just based on what is the most important and to do at this precise moment. But overall, just think about what are those like high leverage tasks that you can get done with the least amount of effort will get you the maximum output possible. Especially if you are an entrepreneur or someone like with a project that is just trying to grow, to do more things, to, to accomplish more and you have big dreams for your company, for your business. A very quick example of this like high leverage type of tasks. Right now in my company, uh, that is like a YouTube organic marketing company, I am hiring five new roles. And that's like a lot of people to find, right? Especially because we have super high standards on the type of people that we work with. Now, instead of me every single day focusing on, hey, how can I recruit like all of these people? How can I interview them? All of that, a high leverage type of task that I'm focusing on right now, I'm hiring a recruiter because once I find the perfect recruiter, that person is going to be able to go ahead hire the five other roles that I need to hire for my company, right? So that's a quick example, small example, but just to put things in perspective, you do one move and you immediately got more leverage out of your time, out of your tasks and what you need to get done for the day. So to kind of recap those last two things, planning the work that needs to get done the day before, focusing on high leverage type of tasks, also focusing and making sure that your environment is like optimized before starting to work on that like first four hour work block. So a few things is just make sure that your room is clean, that everything smells good, that you have, for example, like a bottle of water. That is something that I encourage you to do. Uh, there's like this, I don't know if it's like an actual study. I haven't just heard about it, might be totally wrong, but I think that people like in finance on Wall Street and stuff like that, or just these like roles that are super like data driven and super like energy draining, they usually go and have like these big bottles of water for the whole day, right? I think that it has like a relationship with your energy levels, like when you drink a lot of water and feeling less like sleep or stuff like that. So I'll encourage you to always have like your bottle of water. Like actually like right now, I have mine here. I usually drink like at least two liters of water per day. And when I was doing like the 75 part that I just completed it like a few weeks ago, I was drinking like four liters of water per day. So but that's a recommendation from me to you as well. Besides that, my recommendation is to make sure that that four hour work day, like work block in the morning is going to be uninterrupted. I preferably do it from 
8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So I recommend you to do the same. In the morning is better, and I will explain why in a second. But focus on those first four hours of work to be super high quality, uh, uninterrupted. For example, here, I tell everyone like the maid that help us in our house, uh, the cook that help us as well. And uh, no one can like knock on the door. No one can call me or reach me by any means. Like not my team, not my parents, not my family, not anyone. Everything is super like locked. So that those four hours are uninterrupted, quality, hard, focused type of work. I don't listen to any type of music. And that's my recommendation as well. That's just a distraction. I even sometimes use like these noise protection, uh, like headphones type of thing just to protect you from the noise. And yeah, I just make sure that the work that I will be doing is uninterrupted, four hours of work, super productive, high leverage tasks, uh, no distractions at all. And that's how it usually works out for me. Super well, super recommended. Usually also something that I have found is that in the morning in that first like work block is a four hour work block again from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And in the evening kind of, I do a secondary work block that is usually a little bit less time. So it tends to be around three hours of, again, focus type of work. And on top of that, throughout the day, I just try to do like light work, right? Depending on the day, anywhere between one to four hours. And that's usually how I structure my work protocol. Now, this tends to work for me super well when it comes to the work protocol. But as you know, there are other like traps and pitfalls that drain our energy and we should probably avoid at all costs, right? Two things that I'll mention here. There are routine support tools for navigating through normal life complexities and being able to stick with the work routine and with the health pillar that we discussed. But on top of that, there are also like a list of things that we should probably avoid to again, keep like our energy levels super high and make sure that all of the quality and the output that we produce is top quality. So let me share them with you. The first thing that I wanted to review are the traps, the things that we should probably avoid. These guys is like the basic stuff, right? As they say, professionals never don't do the basics. And this is precisely what we need to remember. What are the basics? So first thing, I try to avoid music with lyrics. If you really think about it, most of the music that we listen to nowadays, like the lyrics just talk about bullshit, right? Like drugs, alcohol, uh, girls, and just things that distract us. So instead of like listening to lyrics that make no sense at all, just try to put that out. If you like music, try to listen just to instrumental. Again, is this something hard? I totally get it. And it's not something that I always fully uh, do, but it's something that every time, like every single day, I try to do more, right? I just try to avoid music with lyrics. Second thing, of course, like things like porn, things like social media, things like having any type of screen time while eating, things like alcohol, which is brutal for your mind, brutal for your body, and even like low quality conversations. I don't know if you have noticed this, but if you are someone that is into the path of self-development, you just want to make sure that you are creating like a bubble around you, right? At least that is a conclusion that I've come to with my coaching. And it's like, hey, I really want to make sure that everything around me, everything, like every single thing, the type of conversations and the people that I surround myself, are only the type of people that are at least trying to do something with their lives, right? They don't have to think exactly as I think, but at least I want to make sure that the people that I surround myself with are, again, just going for big things with their life. They are trying to accomplish something and they are not just getting by day by day. Besides this list of things that we need to avoid, there's also like what I call routine support tools. These are just certain items that, as I mentioned earlier, will allow you to navigate through the normal life complexities. Sometimes it's normal, right? Sometimes maybe you're feeling a little bit like overwhelmed or stress or anxiety, whatever it may be, right? So these tools, if you do them, will change probably your biochemistry and will help you mentally with those things when you need it to get back into your work protocol, to get back into your health protocol, the things that we discussed earlier. Now, what are some of these things Personally, just my favorite things. First of all, the breathing exercise. I know that there's like a million methods, but personally, the one that I use is from Tony Robbins. So basically, the method goes something along the lines of breathing as much as you can, holding that breath for four times the number of seconds that you breathe in initially, and then exhaling two times 
the number of seconds for which you breathe in at the beginning, right? That's kind of like the method, doing that 10 times. Another option that you have is just stretching, is just taking like some like a super, like I really like that, especially when my mood is not the best. I just go for a, like a walk or something I receive like sunlight. I love to do that. Besides that, I also love doing maybe a little bit of meditation or visualization, maybe going for a walk, maybe um, doing a little bit of pumping and doing like, and just dropping those 25 push-ups. Those are a few of what I call like routine support tools. Because again, it's normal when you feel for some reason a little bit down and that's usually where you start to neglect some of the other important things that we talk about, like the health pilot, the health protocols, the work protocols. So it's important to have like these tools for whenever you feel, whatever you feel that is not positive, applying any of this instantly changing your mood, changing your feeling, therefore your actions and getting right back on track to work, to be productive and to get in like that being those four hours of work per day. Now, I want to do a disclaimer here. Of course, everything that we just talked about is not like based on hardcore truth and like scientific principles or anything like that. These are just personally the things that I've found useful in books, uh, by reading articles, by talking with people, by talking with friends, by experimenting with myself. And again, I'm just sharing based on my experience. So I'll encourage you to do your own research, test it out for yourself, see if this is a routine that works for you, if like working these four hours per day actually works for you. And also a secondary note that I wanted to give is that if you have big dreams, you know that four hours of work per day are not going to be enough. This is the way that I structure it is for you to be able to get the maximum impact for these four hours of work. But if you have big dreams again, this is not going to be enough. Usually what I do, I try to do two of these per day and I also work a few more hours of light work. And you know that that's what needed, right? Even with the hard work, it's not guaranteed that you will achieve your goals, your objectives. But hard work plus some of these optimizations that we discussed in these protocols that I would say that probably they will increase your chances. So anyway, these are just a few of the things that I wanted to share. Hopefully this makes sense and help you structure your quote unquote for our work day every single day. If you enjoyed the video, I invite you to subscribe right now. It will mean the world to me, especially because this video that you're watching right now, I just recorded it like an hour ago and I lost the file basically. Let's leave it at that. So I'll really appreciate that subscribe. And also in the next three seconds, I'll be recommending another video that I think will be super valuable to you as well. So I hope to see you there. See you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.